The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Thursday morning. We got a lot of action out there right now, and markets accelerating to the upside. We're trading at 46.29. Remarkable. We were 3,500 not that long ago. We were chopping around 3,600 not that long ago. Markets relentlessly to the upside, man, as we got a strong GDP number. We got an ECB decision raising rates by a quarter percentage point. We got some earnings numbers out there as well. We jump into it with the equities right now. Markets in positive territory. S&Ps up three quarters percent, trading at 46.29. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 1.4 percent. Talk about an acceleration, man. We were nearing 15,500 yesterday on a couple occasions, right? Check it out. Right at about 11 in the morning, you got that first dive lower. We saw some volatility around the Fed decision at about 2.30, 15,525. We are 2% higher in the NASDAQ 100 from where we were. Ballparking it a bit, right? But you're up 300 points, man, in an index that was trading at 15,525 just for relentless uh, upside in this market. We jump over to some of the companies I mentioned that we'll go over. How about MetaShares, right? That's going to put a boost, man. You're talking about up almost 10%. Remarkable, man, these equities. We jump over to some of the big dogs. Apple shares, going to get a boost to the tune of about a buck fifty at 196. You take a look at Apple, 198.23, the all time highs. It just doesn't stop, man. We're going to open today above 196 for Apple shares. You jump over to Microsoft. Microsoft going to open higher by about a couple dollars as well. You jump over to Amazon shares. Amazon's going to get quite a nice boost there. About $2.50 to the upside. That's going to be a 2% boost on the open for Amazon at almost 131 this morning. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of companies. We got McDonald's. Why not? We'll jump into all this, folks, but check out the move on McDonald's, right? Ooh, not sure. I hadn't seen that one. That is quite the move. So something's going on in that conference call that began at 830. As McDonald's catches a spike higher. Hey, who's up next? Who, who does the program next? Our man Basil Chapman. Does he ever talk about round numbers, folks? How about 300 for a round number? Pegs 300 on the dot following their earnings release at 7 a.m. Eastern Time this morning. Strong numbers from McDonald's. So it'll be interesting to see what happened there that they trade lower. It has been quite a run for this equity. There's the daily. You back it up over five weeks, though. Five years, not five weeks. Five years. Really interesting how some of these equities got out of a channel line during the COVID collapse, right? And then almost resumed that channel line. Let's see if that matches up. I mean, look at the run this thing has been on. And COVID just got it out of its channel, but basically it's been in that channel. I mean, check it out. That is a, whoops, that's a pretty well-defined channel for McDonald's, man. McDonald's just continuing to crush it. And let's go from a series of tops here. Not exactly parallel lines, but you see the point, man, right? Pretty well-defined from where we were prior to the pandemic. This is coming out of the lows of 2015 with McDonald's basing around 100. And yeah, we're basing around 290 on McDonald's. It's been quite a run. That's a long-term monthly. We back it up to a three-year weekly. But as you can see, right, you match up that weekly, you see the tops there. Pretty well-defined channel line, just quite not uh, parallel, you could say. But yeah, quite a run for McDonald's shares across the board this morning as we got higher prices, but McDonald's gives it back on their conference call with something going on. Crude, pushing higher. We jump over to the dollar index. Lots going on, as I mentioned, with the ECB, man. Check out that move in the dollar index, right? We have euro weakness. We have dollar strength. We got yields coming in to lower price, higher yield on a strong GDP number right now. We jump over to the volatility index. We got a 12 handle, folks. Got a 12 handle, 1274 initially. Very little to get in the way of this market. We have two full months until a Fed decision, okay? The only thing hanging over this market right now is a Fed decision, man, because it is relentlessly strong. Um, nice, I appreciate it. We'll check out NVIDIA as well. Yeah, I mean, it's just everywhere, man. NVIDIA up by $10, right? Jump over to Intel, 
up by 25 cents. Not a bad move. No, 50 cents, 40 cents. Yeah, Intel up more than 1%. I was checking out Intel this morning. Check this out, folks. So Intel, all right, we're jumping around a bit on the first segment. Well, why not? Intel's got their numbers after the bell today. $2.16 move priced in. Okay, so you get a little bit of a lift coming into that number. You want to see something crazy? <laughs> Intel makes chips, right? They used to be the biggest chip maker in the world. It was quite a run from where they were at the lows of 2008, $12 up to 70 okay? But you're telling me that you're almost break even from 1997 to 2022. Over a 25 year period, a company like Intel from the years of 1997 to 2022 made you no money in capital appreciation. Uh, boy, that's that's a heavy, you know, you ever think you know more than the market, folks? You ever think you do? OK, especially in investments, diversify yourself, because, boy, there were probably a lot of bright people that saw the potential for the Internet, that saw the potential for everything to have a microchip at some point in the future. They thought could, they maybe could load up on Intel in 1997. Maybe they loaded up a little bit before then when the run really began. I mean, I got 34 pennies on this chart going back to 86. So it was quite a run from 1986 to 1997. Okay, but I'm bringing this a little bit to the forefront because maybe we're a little bit, I'm sure there's some equities, let's put it this way, that are getting ahead of itself a bit when it comes to AI, maybe like Intel did. Just remarkable. We were just trading, folks at a price point of $24.73 this year. Okay, now you're up 10 bucks from that price point. $24.73, and we hit a price of $25 in August of 1997. That's 26 years, man. That is 26 years that Intel was almost at the same exact price. Absolutely remarkable, man. They got a lot of homework, homework to do. They got a lot of work to do. They're out with their numbers after the bell tonight for Intel shares. All right, let's get back to the headline number and we're gonna get back to second quarter GDP. So I got a few articles up here. Headline number is GDP grew at a 2.4% pace in the second quarter. I mean, expectations were at around 2%. 2%. Uh, was the consensus estimate from the Dow Jones. I had a couple different articles up here. Where am I going? There we go. I wanted to talk about the journal as well. Uh, U.S. economy grew at 2.4% in the second quarter. It would suggest that we are steering clear of a recession. But inflation looms, right? Um, consumer spending fuels the economy out there. And we're going to get to see where that goes, man. Now... I believe it was this one that talked about different areas. So GDP, the sum of all goods, increased at 2.4%, better than the 2% the market was looking for, okay? The personal consumption expenditures price index increased just 2.6%, down from a 4.1% rise in the first quarter and well below the 3.2% the market was looking for. So that is coinciding there, for sure. Consumer spending increased at 1.6%, accounted for 68% of all economic activity. Oops, get back to that article. Um, yeah. Private domestic investment increased 5.7% after tumbling 11.9% in the first quarter. You talked about a reversal, right? Private domestic investment, a 10% surge in equipment, a 10% surge in structures help power that game. We got a lot to talk about, folks. Stay tuned. We're coming back talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. We got a lot to talk about. As I said, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets continuing to trade higher right now with the S&Ps up 36 points. That's 8 tenths percent in the positive and the NASDAQ 100 approaching 1.5 percent in the green up 227 points right now. 15,837 to talk about some of the action this morning. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network. Fast market every trading day, folks. 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV from the TD Ameritrade Network. Fast market with Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. They're talking about defined risk in every trade they walk you through. And boy, we got a lot of action this morning. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Big day, this big day, big data, big earnings, big everything to start this day, Tommy. This could be this could be an interesting one. But the double edged sword with a strong market is you got higher dollar, you got higher yield. So everyone should keep one eye on that for a market that may be getting a little ahead of itself. But as of right now, boy, this is a big start to the day, Tommy. It's pretty remarkable, Kevin. I wake up this morning, S&P's up another 30 points. We're within a stone's throw of all-time highs, man. We haven't had to say it like that. Um, but, boy, you catch a couple days of runs, and you put it well. We have things coinciding pretty well right now with the potential. Um, I mean, S&P's are only up 8 tenths percent. NASDAQ 100 is up almost double that percentage-wise, pushing 1.5 percent to the upside right now. Excuse me. What do you think of the GDP numbers following the Fed, Kevin? I mean, there's going to be a lot of conversation, of course, about a hot market, where inflation goes. we got personal consumption expenditure numbers that are pretty decent out there as well. Uh but pretty relentless, this economy with a 2.4% growth number beating expectations. Market doesn't seem too worried about the Fed right now as it marches higher. Well, you know, Jerome Powell basically gave, once again, some information to the markets that they consumed favorably, right? He basically said he's we're closer to our destination and that he's patient and resolute. Were, were some of his comments yesterday? He did allude, though, Tommy, to another interest rate hike before the end of the year but you know we the the expectations for 
second quarter GDP. We're starting to creep a little higher, as you know, but not that high, Tommy. Not 2.4%. So, yeah, that was a really strong GDP number. Durable goods orders really strong. Probably some airline purchases in there as the ex-transportation was strong but a little lower. Uh, so good good jobless claims, good durable goods, good GDP, good earnings out of some of the uh, large-cap tech. So, uh, yeah, Tommy, we're off to the races right now. You say it as well as you can, man. There is just crazy action and a lot of it to the upside. We have some pullbacks, of course. We get so many equities out with their numbers. Uh, we talked about it earlier in the week, Kevin. You made some great points for expectations, right, for companies like Microsoft, for companies like Google. Uh, I think we were probably talking Tuesday before they had some of their numbers. All things considered, it's going pretty well. Microsoft is just off those numbers they had on a little bit of a pullback. But, boy, it's been quite a run. I have Microsoft at 340 right now. When we were chatting at Tuesday, we were maybe in 345 almost at some point that day. So a little bit of a pullback. But then you go to Google, right, crushes it. You go to Meta, they crush it as well. Uh, what do you think of how they're handling these numbers? Next week, we get some big numbers as well. Uh, Apple out there, I think Amazon as well. Does this set the stage where it seems like they're, they're beating these expectations, man, even as high as they are coming into this earnings season? Yeah, it's really interesting how uh, the, you know, some of these stocks – and one of the stories, one of the topics that we're talking about today is maybe we're looking at this wrong. Maybe instead of looking at how much these stocks have run so far this year, like we are in stocks like Meta – Look how far they sold off at the end of last year. Maybe that was the bigger story, and maybe that was the outlier. Maybe some of the, this this rally is just recovery of some of those levels because you, you take names like Netflix, you take names like Tesla, you take names like Meta Platforms today. They're still not at their all-time highs. Now, NVIDIA has, Apple has, uh, but a lot of these names still aren't at all-time highs. I mean, so... I think it's an interesting story. You know, I, I've been talking all week. The one-year charts on some of these stocks, they look insane. But if you put up a three-year chart, you realize that it's a different story because they sold off incredibly low, lower than they probably ever should have traded at the end of last year. And now, big recovery. You make a great point. What was so cool was, Kevin, I was jumping around on a three-year chart as you were talking about some of those equities, man, on the Thinkorswim platform because it is so remarkable. And I found myself looking at those three-year weeklies on the Thinkorswim platform because they encapsulate, boy, you talk about runs. Uh, I was talking about Meta earlier in the program, Kevin, basically got it all back. You make a great point. The all-time high is 384. We're trading at 326. But we chopped around for a bit towards the end of 2021, and this thing actually started 2022, almost right where we're trading at right now, and traded down to $88 um, with that market run. So, boy, quite a, uh, a symmetrical trade lower, and we get it almost all back on Meta, even though we're off the all-time highs. But you laid out well. Amazon, well off the all-time highs, among many other companies as well. With that in mind, Kevin, we're still marching forward throughout the week. We got some companies coming up with their numbers. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 today, man? Yeah, great show in line for today, Tommy. Uh, like Foley was going to do a presentation on Roku, the streamer. Remember, more talk about digital ad spend. Meta, you know, had a nice jump in digital ad spend. We'll see if that translates into Roku on today's show, and then we'll trade Exxon Mobil coming out with earnings before the open tomorrow. And then we'll look at the much beleaguered Intel and see if there's anything there that, that, that we can make a case for. So Intel, Roku, Exxon Mobil today. And you know what, wow, I, was, I was mentioning Intel earlier in the program as well, Kevin. I pulled up uh, a monthly chart on the Thinkorswim platform and just went back as far as I could. You have 19, let's put it, 86 on this chart at 34 pennies, but absolutely remarkable that you talk about, Kevin, this equity basically was trading back almost 26 years ago earlier this year. As you were at 25 bucks, you were at 25 bucks in 1997, which is remarkable when you make chips to think where the world has come over 25 years. We're off of the lows on Intel at about 35 from about 25 this year, but that's one of the companies, man, off of the highs of almost 70. What do you, what do you give us a little teaser on Intel? Because boy, that's an interesting chart, man, as I check it out, as I ask you the question. Yeah, remember there's massive uh, semiconductor maker, but semiconductors are frankly some extra push. You see it in 
And at the same time, advanced micro devices is kind of eating their lunch. Tommy. Yeah. I mean, there's everything they have is coming out better and quicker and faster than Intel. So, yeah, there, there's some serious competition coming in. And, you know, David and Goliath, when you compare AMD to, to Intel, David and Goliath is an old story for a reason, Tommy. And that's because... David won, and you, you know you're seeing a company only a fraction of the size. And now AMD's getting into AI chips like Nvidia. They're one, I think it's one sixth the size of Nvidia in terms of, or one eighth maybe. I, I forget what I said, but they're a fraction of the size of Nvidia, and they're starting to compete in AI now in their chips. So you know, AMD. Looks like they're a smaller company, but a serious competitor to all these. So, yeah, well, we're, we're going to cover Intel and see if they're competing in, in semiconductors. Sounds like you got some great themes, man. I look forward to that conversation as well in terms of uh, maybe we're looking at a little bit wrong, man. It's important to keep the options open right now as this market continues to defy uh, any, any headwinds at all. Kevin, I appreciate the time as always. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, man. And we'll talk to you next week, brother. Have a great day, Tommy. You too. Folks, check it out. 12 today. Fast Market. We'll be right back for the open. Pesavento, the renowned trading mastermind, is holding an exclusive live trading event on Wednesday, August 2nd. From 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, transform your trading skills with the real-time wisdom of a Wall Street veteran. Just $295 gets you a front row seat to this power-packed session, plus a month free of Larry's sought-after newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, a $97 value. Elevate your strategies, decode the markets, and achieve your financial goals. Remember, this event will be archived for all attendees, and Larry only does a few of these a year. Don't miss this opportunity. Sign up today at TFNN.com. Secure your future and start trading smarter. TFNN. Educating investors. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P opening up about 33 points. 
right near the pre-market session highs. You made it as high as 46.34, just after that ADP, uh, excuse me, not ADP, just after the GDP. So many DPs, right? So much data coming out, ADP, GDP. Uh, nonetheless, GDP this morning, 2.4%. We got a rate decision from the EC at a pretty similar time. You got a press conference that began at about 8.45 a.m. this morning with Christine Lagarde. Not sure if she's still talking, she may be. Uh, but nonetheless, markets relentless. Now, here's the thing that's remarkable, though, is that we are already higher coming into that GDP number. All right, we've actually traded a bit lower from where we were coming into that number at 8.30. The market was already higher by 30 points coming into that number. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 217 points. We were above 16,000 a week ago. We're just under that price level at 15,834. The Dow barely in the positive, right? Talk about divergence, man. Tech stocks soaring. The Dow only up one-tenth percent. The Russell up by about half a percent right now. We jump over to Meta on their numbers. They give back some of the gain, but boy, quite a pop. Up 8.3% from Meta shares to 322.61. We've given it up from that 330 round number as Meta trades a little bit lower on the open. Let's check out some of the big dogs. Apple up 7 tenths percent. Amazon really caught a pop. Yeah, they're up more than 2% so far this morning at 130.74 after they traded lower on Tuesday following Microsoft numbers, right? Microsoft up 7 tenths percent right now. We jump over to Google shares up 1.5% right now. We take a look at Snap digesting their horrific numbers. Yeah, basically flat. They clawed back some of the losses yesterday, but be careful on Snapchat, man. They were talking about even in the den. Um, what's 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 that business plan, man? How does that survive? You got to be one of the top two, three, four networks out there, right? What do you have? You have TikTok, you have Facebook. I don't know if Snapchat survives, man. I just, uh, the, the chart says they don't, folks, okay? And as a user for anecdotal information, that says that it doesn't either. I don't understand. Uh, look at this chart. Did they go public in 2017? Is that what this is? It probably is. When public in 2017, Trades to five dollars somehow makes a run to eighty four before now you've been chopping around at ten bucks for a solid year on Snapchat. Remember how everything rebounded and take a look at Snapchat. Different story. Now Roku, I'll give you a similar story except slightly different twist. Yeah, you're back to where this thing basically went public, right? Twenty seventeen. You're at seventy two bucks off the highs of five hundred, but not exactly chopping around at the lower levels. This thing hit a low of forty five bucks. Hit a low of $39 earlier in the year. You're at 73. And functionality wise, I see an extreme reason for Roku to be around. See no reason for Snapchat to be around. None whatsoever. Completely replaceable. Roku to a certain degree replaceable as well, but they cornered that market of set top smart talk smart TV boxes, right? We have like four of them in my household, so I'm biased, okay? But I see the potential for owning that market allowing an entry and access gateway of some degree to streaming. Uh, they do a lot of advertising. They have their own channel, et cetera. So yeah, functionality why, I mean, maybe they got bought out when we were, then when they were at the doldrums, that's something that got talked about here. You got a company that's valued at $10.2 billion right now. I mean, it was getting thrown around, man, that Netflix was gonna scoop them up. You take a look at the company Netflix, $186 billion, right? So 10 billion, not the end of the world. $10 billion, you're only talking about almost about a $20 share move for the price of Netflix shares. And for some context here, and I'm not saying this is going to happen, but for some context here, Netflix just traded from 500 down to 421. Okay. They just traded in the last month up $80. Let's just take that out. Let's, let's use the 480 price point because that's a cherry picked high of 495. So within the last month, Netflix has traded from about 415 to 485 that's a $70 run to the upside and then a $60 run back to the downside and all it would take is about $25 of price action to buy Roku so that's a it's a calculation that I do make because they have some value on a company like Roku now I bring up Roku Kevin talked about they're going to be taking a look at Roku I'm sure on the program because they have their numbers coming up tonight after the bell and there's some volatility for you. So don't think if you're just bullish on this equity, you can go in and buy some options because this thing is pricing in more than a 10% move in either direction just for the action. Tonight, if you take a look at the weekly, you're looking at $8 a price movement you need 
to be correct if you're buying volatility in either direction. If you're making a directional trade, cut it in half. That means you need $4 of price action, man. I mean, take a look. At the money puts in calls, about four bucks. We're trading at 72.75. You buy a $73 call, you're out of the money, and you're still paying about $4. So you gotta make $4 of price action before any profit. If you think that's too much, you can be the one selling that premium, folks. And that's the beautiful thing about options. If you haven't checked it out, folks, check out Fast Market with our man, Kevin Hinks. He does an outstanding program. Tom White, Kevin, they have an outstanding lineup of guests. I know they're a sponsor, I know I'm biased, okay? But I've learned so much myself from watching them. The best way to learn, folks, is to watch them set up the hypothetical trades so that you can learn how to construct those trades yourself using your market biases. Kevin always says, you gotta have a market bias, okay? And you do, folks, because if you don't need a market bias, think about it this way, right? People are love to find arbitrage opportunities, okay? And selling volatility to a certain degree, right? You love to have that decay on a daily basis, but there's always gotta be some type of market bias. If you're the one selling volatility, well, your market bias is volatility is overpriced. We have a VIX that's now at 12, so be careful on that one, okay? We have a VIX with a 12 handle. Let's jump over. 1296, okay? Very little volatility priced into this market, to say the least. You jump over to the SPY, okay? SPY's up 8 tenths percent right now. We're pushing 459.12, just for some context of how little, all right? These are example trades I'm setting up here. How little volatility is priced in. We've talked about the zero days to expiration options that are all the rage these days, okay? And yeah, you talk about it, man. I mean, you can buy a call that is 15 cents in the money right now, and it is only gonna cost you 90 pennies. So you're gonna pay 75 cents a premium. You're paying about 15 cents of intrinsic value that's built in because you're buying a 495 call. It's ticking around, but you're trading at about four, excuse me, you're buying a 459 call on the S&Ps. You got 10 cents of value automatically, which is trading at 459.10. You're paying 90 cents for it. The cool part about this is, man, and this is just illustrating. I'm not saying buy a call right now. The market's going higher. But to demonstrate how little volatility is priced into this market in both directions, okay? Where are we in? 459. Excuse me. There it is. Uh, you're getting a delta of 50. And these are some of the things, folks. Check out fast market that I've learned myself. Okay, look at You got delta. You got gamma. You got theta. You got vega. Okay? And I'll talk about these on the program as well. If you don't understand them you should understand them even if you don't trade options, okay? Because they help you as an equity trader understand how the market is pricing how equities are expected to move. And that is important even if you're not trading options, okay? But think about this again. You're paying about 75 cents a premium for the day. All of that premium goes away today, so it's gonna decay pretty quickly, okay? Here's the cool part. There's your theta, 76 cents. You know what that is? That's the number I'm talking about, man. Because on zero days to expiration options, theta is how much it's going to decay a day. Well, guess what? It's going to decay all but the intrinsic value because it expires at the end of the day. We'll finish this conversation up when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, 
consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Markets continuing to trade higher right now. You look at the SPY, we're at 459.33. S&P futures right now up 8 tenths percent, 46.32. NASDAQ 100. Chuck, talk about a pop, man. Up 1.8%, up 280 points. We're inching within about 100 of that recent high. Yeah, 16,062, so almost 200 points from that recent high. 15,888. You get the Dow up 70 points, the Russell up by 7. We keep our eye on the dollar index today with a lot of action going on. Dollar catching a bid, man. Look at that run. 101.66, up a full point. Now, we got two things going on. You got some heavy euro action, okay, as the euro spikes from 111 to 110. Man, quite a move on the Forex spectrum. We're actually below 110 now on the euro US dollar. That, of course, putting a bid in the dollar. What do we have? We have lower price, higher yield going on. So we have a higher yield, we have a higher dollar. We have a relentless market to the upside right now and some strong GDP numbers coming in. And we have a VIX, as I mentioned, with a 12 handle of 1289. So back to the SPY, taking a look at this, okay? Even if you don't trade them, understand how they work. That's the coolest part of all this, okay? So first of all, if you understand what delta is, folks, okay, delta is, let me get it up here, it's the rate of change per the underlying asset, as in for every dollar that the SPY moves, how much is each leg of this option going to move, okay? And the example we're giving you is potentially a 459 call. Well, that's a 57 delta, okay? Now, the cool part about this, as I mentioned, is if you understand options, that would give us the right to buy the SPY at 459. Well, immediately, you have about 25 cents of profit built in. That's called intrinsic value. It's, it's value that you're paying for that is in that, that immediately you could take, sell, it's in there. Extrinsic value is what you're paying for in premium, which is time premium, okay, most of which, and these expire today. The cool part about when they expire on the same day, folks, is that your theta is everything outside of your intrinsic value, okay? So you're paying 94 cents for a 459 call. You subtract the 66 cents that it's calling your theta right now. That's your premium you're paying right? That puts you at about 26 or 27 pennies, which is the intrinsic value you have in this equity. So the cool part, though, that you see is that really the intrinsic value is just like buying the SPY, okay? You've paid 26 cents of intrinsic value as a to buy 26 cents of intrinsic value, and then you're paying the 48 cents of premium on top of it, right? or the 63 cents here in the 459. The point being, folks, look at the delta you're getting for what you're paying. 
you're almost getting a delta equal to your theta, which is really the premium you're paying. And the reason why you're getting that is because it's such a low volatility that is priced in with a 12 handle in these equities. I mean, what many option traders talk about, right, is that you like to have theta on your side. You like to sell volatility, okay? And then you like to take advantage of theta by trading options and allowing as it approaches expiration, right, for the benefit of time decay, which is on your side when you're the one selling premium. It's important to understand that the VIX is now with the 12 handle, which is very different from what we've been dealing with. And if that's a strategy you've been employing, again, directionally biased, maybe if you've been bullish, as in selling some bearish, boy, you couldn't make more money than what's been going on recently. Uh, but just keep it in mind, man. And on the flip side of that, yeah, maybe it's time to start buying some volatility with the 12 handle as we come into the second half of the year right now. Uh, strong D GDP numbers in the second quarter. The one thing I found myself asking today, I said, you know what, maybe if we do get any kind of substantial consumer pullback for spending or something like that, because it's not happening yet, man, the consumer is alive and well. Maybe those student loan payments kicking off in a couple months will really put a hurt on the economy, and that's going to be fourth quarter numbers. So think about it. You're going to have to go about six months from where we're at right now to get fourth quarter numbers, which are the ones that are going to include really when people start getting squeezed for um, for student loan payments. And, and that's going to matter when you talk about consumer spending. It has to because it's coming from consumers, and it is a huge chunk of what they have going on there. All right, what else are we going to talk about? We talked about the ECB to a bit, but let's do the numbers. ECB hikes their rate. They lifted to 3.75%, just for some context of where they are versus where we are. They go from 3.5 to 3.75. That's what they were thinking was going to happen anyway. Um, yeah, and we go from there, and we got about two months until those next meetings, man. So we have a while to go, to say the least. We talked about the GDP numbers as well. 2.4% is the headline number. And you get into where those numbers were. Consumer spending increased 1.6%, accounted for 68% of all economic activity during the quarter. I mean, remember how big of a handle it's going to be when people start getting three to $500 bills, man. And you're talking about tens of millions of people across the country that are going to be getting those bills. All right, let's take a look at some of the individual equities. What do we got up here? McDonald's, yeah. Sales, profit, beat estimates as diners flock to the chain. Now, I talked about it. Let's refresh this and see if maybe they updated in terms of what happened on that conference call, man. They did update it at 941. Let's see what happened. Uh, second quarter sales and profits surpassed analyst projections, but warned of slower growth later this year amid a challenging economic backdrop. Oof, maybe that's it, man. Um, I wonder how many people that visit McDonald's have outstanding student loans. That'd be an interesting one, right? Show me the average, I bet McDonald's might have it. I bet they might. Key metric of comp store sales rose 11.7% in the quarter. Market was looking for 9.4. Comp sales were always my favorite when these retail stocks come out with it, man, because we know that they grow by adding stores, right? Maybe not McDonald's anymore, as they're basically everywhere. But it's remarkable that they can grow that number in the same store not as remarkable, I guess, when you have inflation roaring, but still quite a number, man. 12% in the quarter, besting a 9.4% average uh, compiled by Bloomberg. 317 a share, also beat expectations. But yeah, I guess they're looking for slowing growth is the number. Warned of a tamer expansion later in the year in part as declining inflation rates translate into fewer price increases. Customer discretionary spending is limited and industry traffic is pressured. As inflation begins to normalize later this year, we expect top line growth to moderate. They're making money because they're jacking up prices, man. That's what they're saying. And they might not be able to continue doing that. Interesting, right? Uh, that's your spy. We jump over to McDonald's shares. They get it all back. There you go. Not bad. Look at this relentless strength, man, from McDonald's. Up 1.5% on McDonald's numbers. Yeah, strong numbers, man. Lower income consumers are still frequenting the chain, even if the size of their order is shrinking. Boy, folks, that's pretty tough if you got to hit Mickey D's and you got to size down what you're ordering, you know, but that's where we are, I guess. Uh, they're gaining diners who are trading down from full service or casual. That one makes more sense, right? You're looking to save some cash, you go to McDonald's um, versus, yeah, Chipotle. 
There's another one for you. Down 8.5%. We didn't even talk about that one yet, man. Uh, different story, right? Down 177 bucks for this equity, and it would make sense as it's different consumers, man, for Chipotle trading down 8.5%. That's a haircut for you. And that's with the market up 1% to 2%, man. So we got the AA NASDAQ right now up 270 points. We check back in on the dollar index. Catching a bid. Up almost a full point from where you were early this morning from 160 to 10160 right now. One more segment. Stay tuned, folks. We'll finish up the program. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P right now up by 36. You got the NASDAQ. It's almost making pre-market, um, but not pre-market. Market session highs right now. We're at 15,894. NASDAQ 100 up 1.8% right now. We jump around to some of the companies with their numbers. As I mentioned, McDonald's numbers, they catch a bit up 1.7%. Chipotle Mexican Grill, they missed expectations. They missed on revenue. Um, and that's always a tough one. 2.51 billion versus 2.53. Pretty close, but close doesn't cut it when expectations are sky high as they trade down almost 8.9%. And you talk about some volatility, folks. It is a great time. Our man Larry Pesavento coming up next Wednesday, folks. 
He is going to be doing a live trading webinar. He does about a couple of these a year. I think the last one he did was in March, and this one's going to be in August. So you're talking about five months in between the last one of these. 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time. This coming Wednesday, it's Thursday, so six days away. It's from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. It will be archived. If you can't attend all five hours live, you want to check out the replay as many times as you'd like if you do attend. If you sign up for this, you get a free month of his newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7. That's a $97 value right away. The cost is $295. It will be archived, as I mentioned. Uh, and when you sign up, you immediately gain access to his newsletter, folks. And you get it for a month following the event next Wednesday. So if you sign up right now, you really get more than a month of the newsletter as we just basically give it to everybody for a month following the event. But in the lead up to it, we'll give it to you right when you sign up. It's just automatically assigned to your account when you sign up for the live trading webinar. And for you current subscribers out there, it's an automatic value. If you're already paying for the newsletter, you get that one month of value your next month of your payment, or you'll get it for the yearly as well in terms of one month coming in there. Check it out, folks. we got a great market for this. Larry's excited for it. Uh, we've been talking about it. He's got a five-hour plan, um, and he does not trade the final two hours of the day usually, folks. That's why he sets it up like that, 9 a.m. till 2. He'll be teaching a lot of his methodologies as well. Uh, can't believe we're in August, folks. August next week. You know what's crazy for you Boston people up there? Pretty much everywhere. Schools in Florida start the week of August 7th. Yeah, we're a month ahead of you guys somehow. Either way, stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Don't forget about Larry coming up next Wednesday. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow, folks.